Well, good evening, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us here at Solid Rock for our Wednesday devotional. I think it's very important that we receive God's Word, not only on, on Sunday, but um, every opportunity that we, that we have. And so I am just overjoyed to be able to share with you today uh, some significant things from the Word of God. And I welcome all of our online um, listeners, all of our online viewers that join us each and every day. And I'm excited to just uh, get into the Word of God and minister on to you, all right. So uh, uh, let's uh, let's let's get right into this, and I'll I'll make a couple of statements towards uh, uh, towards the end of our uh, our lesson today. And um, and I and I want to I want to talk to you, and I feel like it's very significant, very important that we uh, we understand that God wants us to grow in His grace and and to become better each and every day, and that deals with the word holiness. Now sometimes. You know, we get we get caught up with that word and really don't understand what it represents and, and what it means. And uh, so I want to kind of share uh, this lesson with you a little bit today. So join me as we pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I give you glory and honor for everything that you do in our hearts and our lives. And I thank you for all the people of Solid Rock and all of our guests who are watching tonight. And I pray, Lord, that you would just open up our hearts and our minds. Let us receive your word, that we may grow thereby and mature and become better. And Father, I'm going to thank you for your grace, and I'm going to thank you for your strength and everything you do. In Jesus' name, amen. So uh, let's, let's get into this, uh, if we may. Um, and, and I feel like uh, that, that this subject was just something that, um, that I certainly uh, needed to, uh, uh, to, to get into now more than ever. I, I think um, certainly that the church uh, needs some simple and straightforward uh, teaching on living right and challenging us to get up higher and a higher level uh, in our relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. So this is where I'm going to go today. Every believer, I think every believer, every individual has the responsibility to live right. Now, I don't care if you've been saved for one day or if you've been saved for 50 years. There's a responsibility that is there. Um, in our series, we're talking uh, in the book of James about, uh, about faith, a faith that works. Um, James 1 and 23, uh, James said that we are to be uh, doers of the word and not just hearers. And so that uh, takes in everybody that we are to, uh, we, we are to follow the, the word of God. First Peter chapter one, verse 15 and 16 says, but as the one who called you is holy, you yourselves also be holy in all of your conduct and in all of your manner. For it is written, you shall be holy for I am holy. This is what the word of God tells us. Now, none of us become holy overnight. Nobody just wakes up one day and says, uh, you know, physically and in every aspect of our life, uh, I am holy. Now, there's, there's, a, uh, th there's a different way to look at this, and I'm going to show you that in just a moment about, about being holy on the inside. But the point I'm trying to make is that it is a process, um, you know, that we, uh, we grow into little by little as we cooperate with the Holy Spirit as the Holy Spirit moves in us and certainly works in us and as he dwells. And we are motivated by this reverential fear. And, and I don't want you to get uh, just overwhelmed with that particular statement, but this reverential fear that we have certainly of the Lord. And, um, and we, we have to learn to be more careful of how we live. Of, of how we live our lives here in this world because one of the one of the emphasis that we have made in the book of James that we are to be witnesses and uh, we are to be a witness to those who are around us not only of the household of faith but also of, of individuals that we come in contact we in each and every day and we can make a difference in this world that we live so I'm going to give you just some some quick points here and share with you uh, with this devotion tonight my first point is we have to learn to live carefully. 
That's what Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 15 is talking about. Um, in the NIV, it says, be very careful how you live. And the reason we are to be careful is because the world is, is, is looking at us. And, and they're saying, well, you're supposed to have a relationship with, with the Lord Jesus Christ. And so it speaks to us about not allowing things to get into our spirit that affects our way of, of living and our way of, of, of serving God. Now, with that being said, I want you to understand there's nobody that is perfect and people are at different levels of spirituality in their life. As I already said, there's some that are just recently saved, some that are growing, those who are what the scripture calls new babes in Christ and, and you are learning and you are growing and, and we are not perfect, but God wants us to, to, uh, to do our very best to be the very best that we could possibly be. Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 23, the scripture says, guard your hearts with all diligence because out of it flows the issues of life. And so guarding our hearts means having a, cur a, a very careful mindset and attitude about how we live, not being casual, not being careless about certainly the, uh, as we, uh, that we live today. There's a, a, one of the root meanings of the word holy in the original Hebrew language um, means to be careful. It means to, you know, to, to take care. And so I believe that is an indication to you and I that we have to understand the significance of, um, you know, that we, we have to watch. We have to be careful. Watch. Uh, we, we have to be careful about what we look at careful about what we hear, careful about what we say, careful about the actions, careful about those that we spend the majority of our time with because God wants us to be holy. Now, don't get me wrong. God doesn't want us to live this life, and that's been one of the digs on Christianity. People say, uh, you know, it's just too strict and it's too hard, and and um, and and it's and it's boring, and and you have to live, you know, by by certain rules, and it's all about the you know the do's and 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 the don'ts. And I get what you're saying because I was raised up. I, I really was in the first area of my uh, Christian experience walking with God, very legalistic. And if you didn't look like uh, somebody playing a bit part on the movie 310 to Yuma, uh, you just wasn't holy. And, and, and so we, we kind of looked at all of this, but this is not what God is speaking, is, is speaking to us. It's not what he is telling us because this is not legalistic bondage. It's, it's, it's not, uh, you know, when I say holiness, that's not legalistic bondage and a bunch of rules uh, towards a bunch of rules and regulations. As I said, I had that legalistic background and, and honestly the first few years of my relationship with God and even when I got into pastoring I was very miserable because it seemed like that was just so so pressed down and what we were what we were doing what I'm saying is that we shouldn't compromise don't compromise don't compromise God's word in order that we feel like that uh, you know just to uh, uh, just to go along to uh, you know to, to to get along that's not that's not what God is certainly speaking unto us. James chapter 4 and verse 17 says, any person who knows to do right and doesn't do it, to them it becomes a sin. And we know that the Holy Spirit convicts us in our hearts. You know that. I mean, you may be watching today and you're not even a Christian, but you know that there are things that you do that, that there's something that speaks to you. Your conscience uh, deals with you and, and um, you know, and you know that it's wrong. That's the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit deals with us. Uh, and if we are convicted that something is wrong, don't do it. If you feel that in your spirit, I don't care if there's 30 other people that's doing it and they call themselves Christ followers, um, you know, and and uh, there's there's no consequences to what they're doing. And it seems like everything is all right. I just want to remind you that uh, they may seem to be getting by with it. But sooner or later, we reap what we sow. This is what the Bible speaks unto us. And and so we, we recognize these things. Now, here's my second point that I want to share with you very quickly, and that is the process of growing in grace because it is a process it's it's growing in the things of God it's maturing if you come to solid rock you're going to hear me use that terminology a lot that I want you to be mature 
in your walk with Christ and growing in God. And that simply means uh, becoming better each and every day. Now, God does not ask us to display anything that he has not already given to us. And when we are born again, whenever we receive Christ, uh, then we receive the divine seed of God's nature into our hearts and certainly into our spirits as it comes to us. Now, let me give you a scripture for that. First John chapter three and verse nine. Uh, the writer says, no one is born of God. No one who is born of God will continue to sin. Now, now note that. If you're born of God, you're not going to continue to sin. You don't have a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ who is holy and then continue to do unholy things because God's seed, the scripture says, remains in them and they cannot go on sinning because there is this battle that, and this war that takes place uh, in, our, in our spirits because we have been born again and because we have God's presence in our hearts and certainly in our lives. And the, that moment that Jesus comes into our hearts and our lives, then uh, every characteristic of God is planted on the inside of us in holiness because He is holy, we become holy. And that's holy on the inside. That's holy recognizing that uh, he is with us and he is in us. Just as the ground became holy, remember reading that or you've heard about it in the scripture, the ground became uh, holy uh, where God appeared to Moses in the burning bush. In the same manner, our spirits become holy when he comes to live with us. And that's the miracle of salvation. Praise God. I get excited about it knowing that the miracle of salvation and the holiness and the goodness of God abides on the inside of me. And we have been made righteous and holy in our spirits through the sacrifice that Jesus Christ made on the cross. And I believe this is the first part. You want to talk about holiness. The, the, the first part of holiness is in us. It starts on the inside, certainly, of us. And the second part to holiness is what we call sanctification or growing in grace. The process of becoming, um, you know, like Christ in our souls. And I, I taught it here a few months ago uh, on a series that we call the Foundation Series. And, and uh, if you want a little more, uh, you know, a little more insight on this, you can go to that and, and read the different words that I use, justification, reconciliation, and sanctification sanctification, glorification. Uh, you can go and, and follow one of those sermons and get it off of our, um, off of our website and uh, it can give you some more insight into this. But this is the life-changing work that is done in our minds, in our wills, uh, in our emotions through the power of the Holy Spirit as the Holy Spirit works in us on a day-to-day -day basis. This is what sanctification is. This is what growing in grace is. And the scripture says that it is the God of peace himself. 1 Thessalonians 5.23. The God of peace himself that sanctifies us through and through separating us from profane things and making us pure and consecrated to him. Sanctification is not something you can do on your own. You don't say, well, I, I'm just going to sanctify myself today. No, it's, it's the primary responsibility of the Holy Spirit that is in us. That's why the significance of being filled with the power of the Holy Spirit is so important. And, uh, you know, and what uh, the, our, our job as Christians, as we grow in grace, is to cooperate with the Holy Spirit, with Him in obedience, following His instructions. Again, that we are to be doers of the Word. Do the Word of God. Recognize what God is doing. And I have found out that the very best way to cooperate with the Holy Spirit is get in the Word. Stay in the Word. There's no way that we are going to see uh, a holy behavior by coming to church and, 
and uh, listening to a, a, a 35 minute, 40 minute sermon each and every week and that's it. No, you've got to get in this book each and every day and every opportunity. That's why that we press life groups. That's why that, that uh, we, we press reading the word, getting in the word, studying the word for yourself. And so we want to encourage you to do that and uh, to just get into the word. Only God's holy scriptures can change, um, you know, can change and, and wash away our wrong thinking. And this is what happens. We need our thinking renewed and, and changed. And this happens through the word of God. Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 26 and 7 says that Jesus sanctifies and cleanses his church by the washing of the water with the word that he might present the church to himself in glorious splendor without spot or wrinkle or any such things that, that the church might be holy and faultless. This is what God has done. And as we choose to open ourselves up to his word, as we choose to follow what he has declared unto us, Jesus takes that word and washes away all of our wrong thinking, everything that is contrary to the scripture. And this is all part of holiness and growing in God. And the, re the end result absolutely every time is a life that is more holy as we get into the word and as we trust in God's riches and his grace. And so holiness is not an accident. It's not something that you just stumble into. Hebrews 12 and 14 says, Strive to live in peace with everybody and pursue that consecration and holiness without which nobody is going to see the Lord. Pursue means to follow. Pursue means to chase. Pursue means to go after and to certainly attempt to overtake. In other words, pursuing holiness is not going to happen automatically. It's something that we have to be mindful of and intentional about. And it's going to take an effort on our part. I, I, I ran across this scripture and I'm telling you, uh, I think it's one of the best examples in scripture that's illustrating the point that I'm trying to make uh, to you this evening. And that is found in Haggai chapter 12 or Haggai chapter 2 verses 12 and 13. Uh, in those days, in the, in the days of the law that, um, you know, regularly meat was offered as a sacrifice unto God with the burnt offerings. And then, uh, you know, the meat was, was offered and considered to be holy because it was offered unto God, sacrificed unto God, and it was considered to be holy. And uh, with this in mind, Haggai asked the priest, he was speaking to the priest and trying to make a point. He said, if this holy meat May, uh, you know, uh, excuse me, uh, he's the pre he asked the priest, if this holy meat made other foods, it touched holy too, because it was holy. And, and the priest answered, no, because holiness, holiness is not infectious. Then Haggai asked another question. He said, of someone who is ceremonially unclean, now according to the law, uh, there are things that you, you did, if you did them, you were unclean. If you came in contact with a dead body, you were considered unclean and you would have to be separated and cleansed uh, uh, you know, before, you could, uh, before you could come back in and, and participate uh, in, in these uh, uh, religious things. And he said, if someone is unclean because he's come in contact with a body, um, if these articles of food, if he touches them, are they unclean? And immediately the priest answered, uh, you know, yes, yes, absolutely. Uh, they, they answered that. And so here we have, you know, holiness is not infectious, but unholiness is infectious. Now that's, that's a powerful, true statement. Unholiness is infectious, but uh, is infectious, but holiness isn't. That means that, you know, can we, can we catch sickness by sitting next to someone who is sick? Well, we know if somebody has the flu or has a cold. We've certainly seen it through COVID. Uh, you know, you can be around somebody and, and, and you, can, you can get sick. Um, but can you get health by sitting someone next to someone who is healthy? In other words, in order to see the spiritual health uh, of holiness manifested in our lives, we've got to make right choices. And we have to do, uh, you know, what is right and following the leading of the Holy Spirit as he guides us in all of these truths. We need to take the same care. Look at me. Listen to me, church. I'm trying to help you out tonight. 
We need to take the same care in tending to the spiritual side of our lives and not just be uncareful and, and uncaring and, and, and careless and haphazard in how we live our lives, what we do, because um, we are representing the kingdom of God. And I think one of the greatest motivators that there is to pursuing holiness is that reverential fear of God. And I mentioned that just a moment ago, and I'd like to unpack that very quickly. Um, you know, that we, we see this. In other words, the fear of God is what motivates us motivates us to live a holy life. And if we don't have a, a genuine fear of God, now, now stay with me for just a moment, a genuine fear of God, then there's no soul and there is no heart passion to live holy. So, so what is fear of God? It doesn't mean, ladies and gentlemen, that we are afraid of Him. It doesn't mean that we have to cower in fear. It means knowing that He is awesome. And it means being having reverence for him and respect and understanding who he is and how powerful that he is. Um, Proverbs chapter one and verse seven says the reverent and worshipful fear of the Lord is the beginning and the principle and the choice part of wisdom and knowledge as we have a, a, a reverential fear of him. When we, are, we, when we are motivated by this, when we are motivated by this reverential fear of the Lord, we realize that God's way is the only way. And I'm telling you, that's the way that it is. And if we want our lives to be blessed abundantly and we want God's blessing upon us, we need to obediently follow his plan that he has given to us in the scriptures that we may grow thereby. And I believe we need to start thinking. I, I, I thought about this, um, uh, you know, yesterday when I was uh, preparing for this lesson. We need to be thinking more about eternity instead of just not how we feel right now. We need to be thinking eternal and, and, and be thinking about this life because this life is a hand's breath. It's, it's a moment and then it's gone, but eternity is forever. And so we need to be thinking along these lines and looking at this and, and realizing we are going to spend eternity somewhere. We're going to do that. Yes, God is gentle. Yes, God is loving. Yes, God is kind and merciful. And God is, is long-suffering and, and would that nobody perish. He doesn't want anybody to perish. But he's also just. The scripture bears this out. Romans chapter 14 and verse 12 tells us that each of us someday shall stand before him and give an account for our lives. Account for what we have done. And when we make decisions to do right, to do the right thing. And when we make decisions to, uh, you know, to live right, we may not be too excited about it at that particular moment. But uh, I, I can promise you that, uh, you know, later on, it's, it's, going to, it's going to impact us. And we're going to look at that. And, uh, you know, living a disciplined life uh, of holiness is an investment that pays great dividends, not only in this life, but in the life that is to come where we are going to spend eternity. Now, here's my third point, and, and, uh, and I'm, I'm bringing this to a close. One thing never changes. One thing never changes. And uh, there's, there's something that I want to I share with you, and I, I want you to understand where I'm coming from, and I want you to hear my heart that's very important, that, that kind of give me this direction and this guidance and this. I believe that one of the primary reasons for the lack of holiness and growing in the grace of God, um, you know, in, in, the church, in the church today and among believers today um, is people not calling sin, sin. And there are preachers and there are churches that avoid the subject altogether, altogether because they're afraid of losing their following. They're, they're just fearful. While the mainstream of society that we live in, they rename sins that God has mentioned in the scripture. And they bring them about and say, well, you know, it's different because, I mean, people can have, uh, you know, people can be alcoholics and, and, uh, and have drunkenness and, and uh, be drug addicts. And these are addictions. And I, and I get that. But, but they tell, tell us today, 
today that it's all about disease. You know, well, it's just a disease that they have. Well, it's a disease that the world spends multiplied billions and billions and billions and billions of dollars to promote. And, and we see that and we understand that. They, they talk about uh, adultery. You know, that's one of the Ten Commandments. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Um, they, they talk about adultery like, uh, well, it's just an extramarital affair. There was a harmless sidestepping. No, it's, it's, it's adultery. And, and then they've made abortion a choice. Abortion is now a, a, a choice. It's, it's no longer taking a, a child from a mother's womb that has a heartbeat. And, you know, Roe versus Wade, it was in the first trimester. Now we are in where they, they abort babies in the third trimester. And, and, and so this is, this, is what we are, this is what we are looking at and certainly what we are dealing with today. And, and why, why they have done this in our society is because it removes personal accountability and responsibility from them. And everybody says, well, this is just the way that it, get, that it is. But just because society has changed its standards doesn't mean that God has changed his. His word is still the same. If he said, thou shalt not commit murder, it's the same. Thou shalt not lie, it's the same. And it's not just physical sins. It's also spiritual sins. It's jealousy. It's hatred. It's racism. Um, it's a, a selfishness. It's it's all these areas because because there is no category little sin, big sin. They're sins. They are all sins. But but as we grow in God and and we discover these things, we make decisions that are right. And and so because society does it, it doesn't make the behavior right. We can do things. Now, listen to this scripture. I'm, I'm almost done. He who sows to his own flesh will from the flesh reap decay and ruin and destruction. But he who sows to the spirit will from the spirit reap eternal life. Galatians chapter six and verse number eight. God does not change. God does not lie. He doesn't change his mind. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And his words are never going to pass away. This world will pass away, but not him. Now, you can make a difference. Look at me. Praise God. I've been praying for you. I'm so, I am so proud of the people of Solid Rock. And, and, and yes, we have struggles. We have problems. We are not perfect. We are holy on the inside, but we struggle with this flesh each and every day, and we make mistakes. We are not perfect people. That's on our, that's on our wall out here in our lobby. We are, we are not perfect people. But in spite of how bad that thing seemed to be, I believe we can see a godly change take place in our environment. In, 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 in the scope of atmosphere that we are in. And one man, one woman or, or an individual chooses to stand up and do the right thing and, and live right and make, make right decisions, it can make a difference. I've seen students, one student at a school just just make a decision to live right and not be caught up with all the peer pressure with everybody that's doing everything else. Well, come on, there's a party going on. There's going to be a keg and and there'll be there'll be uh, you know uh, weed there and and uh, you know and, and sex and all these types of things. The student that says no, no, I'm a child of God and I am saving myself for that time when God brings that special individual into my life. And and so uh, you know a, a a student can make a difference in their class. Yes, we get ostracized. Yes, we get talked about. Yes, there are individuals that says, well, that's just goofy because that's not the way the world is today. Exactly. We are in this world, but we're not of this world. And we have a direction that God has given unto us. One person on his job can make a difference being honorable and, and just doing the right thing and being being honest in everything that takes place and giving a, a full day's uh, work for a, for a full day's uh, pay. So we understand that. And uh, it, it has happened before. Things can be changed. And if you want spiritual health, then examine yourself. From time to time, just back up and say, hey, I, 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 I want to look at my life and, and I want to sit down and take an inventory and ask myself, what am I allowing into my spirit? And what am I allowing through uh, the internet or, or through social media or through, through, through the television screen or, or anything else? What am I allowing my, my spirit to, to take in? And so we have to make 
decisions concerning, the, uh, concerning these things. Because I want you to have that, that wonderful relationship with God. And I challenge you tonight. I challenge you to purpose in your heart to do what is right and, and to make right decisions. You, we all stumble and we all fall, but, but God comes along and helps us because if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So don't live your life. Just do not live your, your life seeing what you can get away with. Seeing how close you can get to the edge. But come up higher. Come up to this level where the presence of God is because that's what God wants. He wants that relationship with you. And, and I promise you that you give your life for, for the Lord's sake, then it's going to have a return 100-fold, not only in this life, but in eternity because God loves you. Well, I hope you enjoy this little session tonight. And, and I pray that God just encourages you. And I, I, I want to pray for you just here in a moment and, and lift you up. But uh, I want to invite you to come and join us as we continue our, our series in James, A Faith That Works a faith that works, and we're having fun. Um, I, I'm dealing with James chapter 3 uh, this week, uh, this Sunday, and it's all about the tongue. You gotta, you, you need to come. It's all about the tongue and, and the significance that our tongues and how powerful that they are. Uh, I think, unless the Lord changes, changes my mind, I think I'm going to call it danger tongue at work. So come and join us. Also, Sunday night, we are having uh, a missionary from... Uh, from the Central America uh, lesson, Charlene Melton, that's going to be with us. So we invite you to come. Let me pray for you. Father, in Jesus' name, <clears throat> thank you so much for the presence of the Holy Spirit. And I thank you, God, because you help us to grow in your grace and to do your will. Now, Father, I pray, Lord, that you just keep us in everything that we endeavor to do. May the Holy Spirit watch over everyone who watched tonight. Encourage them in their hearts. Someone maybe that's not a Christian, Father, may they call upon your name and you will save them and touch them right where they are as they ask for forgiveness. Thank you for Solid Rock. Thank you for our church. Thank you for our people. And we give you praise for everything that we do in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. We love you and appreciate you so much.